So I thought it'd be a good idea, as I've been asked by the um, ulcerative colitis um, Facebook group, just to do a bit of an update on surgery, um, to have my colon removed, and also how I was diagnosed when I was diagnosed, and hopefully it will help somebody else out, really. Um, so I fell ill last February, February 2021. And I had excruciating pain, going to the toilet lots, um, blood, or just feeling generally unwell, joint ache, fatigue, or just, yeah, day and night, 20, 30 times a day. Um, lost a lot of weight, so I went to the doctors, they weren't really sure what was wrong, stool samples came back okay, they wrote to the consultant, because I've had colonoscopies and flexi-sigmoidoscopies in the past, they didn't really think that there was any need to investigate any further, um, I kind of pleaded in the end, I just felt so ill, um, and then they did a calprotectin, cal, I think it's calprotectin, cal something, in your poo sample um, and that came back really really elevated it's like 1350 and um, so they sent that off to the consultant he agreed to see me um, and then they did a urgent colonoscopy at the end of April so from the 1st of February day before having the Covid vaccine which we never know whether that caused it or not obviously no one can say um, 1st of February was when I became ill and then they did the um, urgent colonoscopy at the end of April, I think the 30th of April when I was diagnosed. They then put me on Pentessa granules, Pentassa granules um, and some foam to put up my bottom because um, a lot of my inflammation was in my rectum um, and that started to help a little bit um, and then I got through to kind of September ups and downs, good days, bad days, um, didn't really find diet changed much about how I felt, um, but by September nothing was helping, so I was admitted into hospital to have IV steroids, um, hydrocortisone four times a day, um, every six hours, um, they did another flexi which showed that my um, ulcerative colitis had gone from um, moderate to severe um, quite quickly. Um, and they decided that they needed to probably do some other treatments. Um, I came home on high dose steroids, um, and then I started um, vedolizumab, which is a biological, um, which you have intravenously in hospital. Um, I had one, and then I left, and then I had some more as an outpatient in hospital. By December, I was back in just before Christmas. Again, all my problems came back, felt awful, so we knew that vedo probably hadn't worked. I think we gave it one more chance, and we decided we'd try one more option which was infliximab so another biological treatment um, and we actually thought that was probably working but again I was on high dose steroids and weaning off of those and we've now obviously realized that now I've come off the steroids and back to square one that infliximab isn't working either so I've met the surgeon who is lovely she thinks that we now have got to the point that my colon needs removing which we hope is going to be done in the next six to eight weeks. We're now kind of nearing the end of March. Um, so we're hoping that it's done sooner rather than later. They are admitting me back into hospital tomorrow morning at nine o'clock um, because, again, joint pain, fatigue, exhaustion, blood. When I go to the toilet, excruciating stomach pains when I pass bowel movement, um, just feeling generally, generally unwell, losing weight again. Um, so I now know that surgery is the right option. It's it's extremely daunting. Um, and this is why I'm doing the video because then obviously you can hopefully see me on the other side <laughs> when I'm feeling much better. Um, I've got no idea when the surgery will be and whether they'll do it while I'm admitted this time. But again, IV steroids, um, probably another flexi camera to see how things are progressing or you know if they're better or worse um, at the moment I expect it's probably the same or worse because I'm still feeling pretty pretty rubbish so um, we just hope that the video just gives you some kind of hope if you're suffering or at the start of your journey or considering surgery or you're not sure whether it's the right option for you um, I've kind of researched and spoken to so many people and everyone says it's just changed their life um, although having a bag is a scary thought I think you know it's probably the right thing to do now um so yeah there's lots of things to consider a lot of things to chat to but I spoke to the surgeon and the only thing I can't do is deep sea diving <laughs> never really been a deep sea diver so I'm not too worried about that and um I can't eat potato skins and tomato skins I think for a little while um but other than that everything hopefully after the surgery should go back to normal um I can't imagine a normal life now, 13 months down the line from when all my issues started. I've had IBS 
or what they thought, who knows, but IBS for a number of years, I do get myself stressed about a lot of things in life, so um, stress obviously doesn't help, and the more stressed you get, the more anxious you get, and the more anxious you get, the more stressed you get, and then that flares your symptoms, which makes you feel poorly, and it's kind of a big circle of life, really, you just, you know, try and carry on and on and on, so I'll be going into hospital tomorrow, it's nice and quiet in the house at the moment, children are out, and uh, hubby's out with them, so I thought it was a good time to do a quick video of where we are now without boring you all for hours but um yeah if you've got any questions then pop a comment below or ask me any way that we can i might pop this on facebook i might put it on youtube but um yeah however way you know you want to communicate or ask me questions and you know i just i want to help someone and if i can help someone overcome you know the fear of having a bag or anything to do with ulcerative colitis and treatments and hospitals and i've had a huge fear of needles you know pretty much all my life so being cannulated and then fainting and oh, scary stuff but I know I've got to be strong and I've got to get through it and I will get through it because that's life um it throws us a curveball and we just have to kind of pick ourselves up and and get on with it um I've got a very busy life so I need to get back to my busy life although I haven't really stopped too much which probably hasn't helped <laughs> all my symptoms but that is probably another story so rest listen to your body um and I will do another update when I'm in hospital tomorrow and hopefully on the ward or in my room and uh, I can let you know where we're going from them and obviously from then and if obviously if they do surgery I will um do a video on the day of the surgery and the day after if I'm feeling up to it and um see how we go Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye. So I didn't go into hospital to be admitted. I went in and they decided to give me steroids um, intravenously, but as an outpatient. So I went into our AMS deck, which is acute medical, same day emergency care. Um, and they um, got me to see a doctor and a consultant. And they decided that I was too well to kind of be in with COVID being so bad at the moment. So um, I had um, a load of steroids intravenously and then about five hours later I had some more like, on a drip for about an hour and I've been back in three days on the trot which works at about a thousand milligrams I think. Um, so yeah, mega high dose. So now I'm just sitting here on Mother's Day exhausted. The steroids I think are wearing off but um, the issues are a bit better so that's good. Um, I'm still going to have my flexi sigmoidoscopy so they can take some biopsies and check for infection on the 8th of april which is the day after my daughter's 10th birthday <laughs> and she's having a sleepover that night so it's going to be a little bit bonkers um so yeah 8th of april for a flexi and some biopsies to be taken and from then they hope to be able to operate within two to four weeks to take my colon out so I'm standing 40 milligrams of oral steroids every morning until they operate. They said it's not an issue to stay on them. Um, and hopefully that will keep my symptoms at bay until then. If not, then I need to go back in. Um, but we're hoping obviously another couple of weeks and a couple of weeks after that and I can have the surgery. So I'm feeling still pretty washed out, pretty tired. Um, definitely not going to the toilet as much as I was. Definitely more improved. Just wish I could sleep really, but um, we'll see how things go. But yeah, I thought I'd give you an update. So I'm not stuck in hospital. I'm still trying to do some work and things. Um, so yeah, life's carrying on a little bit as normal. Um, hubby's taking the kids to the park because the weather's beautiful. And I'm sitting here just trying to rest and look forward to hopefully having some kind of normality back soon. So uh, I will keep you updated in the next few weeks and let you know how things go. Bye for now. So it's the 28th of March, half two, quarter to three. And I've had a phone call from the hospital today to say that they're going to operate this Thursday. We're going for pre-op assessment tomorrow morning and COVID tests. And if that's all right, they're going to operate on Thursday and remove my colon. A bit of a shock. Different surgeon to Miss Scripture that I was hopefully going to have. But she's found another guy that's supposedly really good. He's moved a few things around and can't carry on as I am. Come for the steroids and all the problems come back. So she's like, let's get the ball rolling. So, um... Yeah, it's scary. A few more days and uh, hopefully I haven't got COVID. <laughs> and I will be in and uh, sorted. So um, I don't know if I'll do another video. I might do another video Wednesday or Thursday or even when I'm in hospital waiting. But I will um, definitely do one soon after the surgery as I feel human and let you know how it's um, 
all gone, how I'm going, how recovery goes. They've told me I'll be in obviously Thursday for the op until Tuesday, come home, a couple of weeks rest, then back to work slowly and no heavy lifting for about six weeks. Um, and then we'll see how things go from there. But I'm hopeful that I can now start to think about living a semi-normal life and getting back to some reality. Oh, because at the moment it really isn't. Just so tired. And yesterday I felt awful. Yesterday was Mother's Day. Went to bed just, yeah, feeling really wrung out. Um, so here's hoping that um, things are now on the up. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye. So it's the day before surgery, 30th March, 10 past 12. Just going to have some really boring low fibre diet for today. Um, I've got to drink some high calorific drinks. I've got to have Claxane injection for blood thinning. Um, I've had to take some laxative stuff um, at 8 o'clock this morning, 2 o'clock this afternoon. Didn't sleep very well last night, so I'm now shattered. But um, tomorrow is the day. You've got to be in at 7 o'clock. Um, Pre-op all went fine yesterday. Um, had a COVID test, haven't heard anything, so fingers crossed that's all all right. Um, Pre-op was fine, took about an hour and a half. They go through um, all your medical history, any medication you're on, and everything that you need to do in the days leading up to it. Um, I then met the stoma nurse to discuss the bag um, and how the operation would go and when they would see me afterwards and she answered any questions I had. Um, it was all very relaxed and very calm. Um, so I don't think there's anything to fear, obviously. Nervous, 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 but it's complete change of life you know having a bag is not something that happens to everybody every day so it's something i've just you know, slowly going to come to terms with and get used to um i'm going in tomorrow at seven they'll operate in the morning um because i'm diabetic so they can't leave me too long um and then hopefully um i'll be out and in recovery quite quickly and then i go back to the um ward and the stoma nurses will come and visit me each day and the nurses will you know keep a keep an eye on me and then they hope i can leave on um tuesday or wednesday so yeah it's all a bit scary we're getting a bit real now so um hopefully it will all go well and i might try and do a video in the morning i've got to be in at seven um so it depends how things go and how quickly i need to get ready and what i have to do when i get there but if i've got time i will do another quick video but um yeah everything was fine pre-op is you know absolutely fine blood tests and mrsa swabs and things like that but definitely nothing to fear um it's definitely better to have it done um non-emergency because obviously you've got all this time to prep and get your body ready for it as if it's an emergency it's obviously much harder so these last couple of days of prepping has made my body hopefully stronger to recover um so yeah, fingers crossed everything goes well and uh, I will chat to you soon. Bye. So I've got my own room and um, I had the operation on Thursday. Um, it's now Sunday morning and yesterday I felt a lot better so they got me out of bed and had a wash and this morning, oh dear, 10 steps back. But they said that's likely to happen on the step forward, 10 steps back. Um, I'm learning to clean the bag, take the bag off, empty in the bag with the nurses and the stoma nurses. You don't see the stoma nurses over the weekend, but they um, they come during the week. It's obviously Sunday, so the nurses are helping me this morning. They've removed my catheter yesterday and the drain this morning. That wasn't very nice still leaking quite a lot but the consultant said he wanted out so out it's come um the operation was a success i suppose it took about three four hours i went down about midday they gave me a spinal block and then general anesthetic um obviously don't know much about it that night absolute agony they gave me so many painkillers and the nausea i just felt absolutely awful i can normally deal with pain but um oh definitely couldn't deal with pain so they tried their best, but then they got the pain management team in on Friday and they gave me morphine every 15 minutes and monitored my blood pressure. Um, and then um, they put me on a pump um, that I could self-administer. So I've got a button I can press every seven minutes and it obviously tells them how much I administer. They've just stopped that today and put me on oral pain relief and anti-sickness. 
I think I just overdid it yesterday. I felt better yesterday and now today I just feel a bit wiped out. Didn't sleep very well. There's, although I've got my own room and on the suite, it is, um, it's noisy and there's people coming in and I'm still on hydrocodeine. Um, well, is it hydrocortisone? Not hydrocodeine. You have to excuse my brain while it's a bit messed up with drugs. But um, I'm still on them and I'm still on azathioprine because I've obviously got autoimmune hepatitis and autoimmune hemolytic anemia so I've got other issues that make it a bit harder to deal with everything else that's going on that's why I was a bit late going down to be operated on because they wanted to do different blood cross matching and group and save bloods before they decided to operate in case I needed a blood transfusion which luckily I didn't um, so yeah the operation was a success and looking at the wound is pretty horrible and cleaning it but I suppose it's a means to an end if I'm not sitting on the toilet 20 times a day and incontinent and everything else that has been going on in my life in the last 13 months so um yeah a little bit of a longer update well only like three minutes but that's long enough for today I just want you know give you all a picture of how it actually is as, as you go through it and if you're thinking of having it done hopefully I can you know shed some light and you've got first-hand experience of you know what I've been through and how it feels and um you can see me, um, looking dog rough, <laughs> but still smiling. I've got really sore lips from all the dry air. Bring lots of Vaseline. <clears throat> Keep sick poles by your bed and uh, yeah, mobilise when you can, but definitely rest when you can. It's a long journey, but it's one that will be worth it. See you all soon. Hi all. So this is the last video. As you can see, I'm home makeup eyebrows done oh my goodness it feels just so amazing i'm not here not here yet um but it feels so amazing to be home so the last video ended with me in my own um room they then um or i then became very ill so i tried to get out of bed collapsed on the end of the bed started to be violently heaving <laughs> just awful um rang my nurse's bell and they were like we're really sorry it's changeover it was like half seven at night so it's all a bit of a nightmare um so yeah i just shouted at anybody help me somebody please but obviously no none of the nurses or that could help so it's all a bit of a nightmare um so somebody that was bringing someone up from recovery i just said please can you get me some sick bowls and uh, she ran and did and it's probably nearly three full bowls of black and green bile i'm so sorry but I know you probably want to know and uh oh yeah it was awful and then once they'd done changeover they came in and said man needs your room so we're going to move you to d-bay with other women i was like oh no I was covered in sick it was just a nightmare um so they moved me to d-bay and i threw up all night <laughs> it was just horrendous um but yeah it got better um loads of people or the other three ladies on the ward were amazing so um they kept me company um helped me rang the bell when i really couldn't i just literally watched every second of the red hand clicking around the clock one two three for hours just begging that sounds awful that i wasn't gonna die i just was in so much pain even on real high painkillers and like i said before i can normally deal with pain but oh my goodness me i was just in so much pain um so then decided that um they needed to do a CT scan to see whether I had a blockage or an infection or an obstruction that needed emergency surgery. So I went for CT scan, die. Luckily, that was all fine. They then had to put a nose tube, like stomach tube, NG tube down into my stomach to pump my stomach every four hours. Um, I couldn't eat. I could only sip. The tube going down was OK, but oh, up your nose and down your throat. It was just scratchy throat. They left that in for about three days, I think. So that wasn't that wasn't great. Um, so yes, it was all all just a bit of a nightmare for a few days. So I didn't do, literally didn't do anything. Um, CT scan came back fine. So they decided they needed to do a barium x-ray. So I had to go to x-ray, come back. They then had to put all this stuff back into my stomach down the tube because I couldn't swallow anything. Uh, and then I had to go back four hours later once all the liquid had gone everywhere. And luckily it had gone where it needed to go. Um, so they think my bowel had just gone to sleep. It had been overused, which it had been 20 times a day. Um, so that... That was, yeah, all a bit scary, but everything went where it went, where it could go. And then they said, right, you can start eating ice cream, jelly, mashed potato, just literally a super soft. Oh, no, they didn't. No, I had to be tube fed, 
rewind a little way. That did happen. But before that, they decided I needed to be tube fed because I hadn't eaten for nearly seven days. <clears throat> and I was very close to having a pit climb put in so they could take bloods because they couldn't get any bloods in the end. Every morning took at least two or three attempts. Um, so the pit line luckily didn't need to be put in, but the feeding tube was so massive bags of big white liquid. Um, it should have been mixed and weren't so the first bag went in unmixed which was very dangerous the second bag went in mixed and luckily started to make me feel better but oh, I just wanted to be sick constantly and I was absolutely petrified and I still am now being sick and not being able to eat and scared of everything that went in my mouth because once you have a stoma you have to eat completely different diet and I'm diabetic type 2 diabetic as well so that really didn't help because everything I have to eat is white <laughs> and um, yeah eating white things isn't good for diabetes so it's all been a bit of a learning curve um, so yeah so gradually I was allowed to start eating more um, and gradually thank goodness got better um, I went in on the 31st of March should have come out about six days later 14 days later I came out, um, I met the most amazing staff and people, um, the stoma nurses are amazing, the bag is absolutely fine, nothing to fear, it's a bit closer to your nose than your bottom but needs must, um, I haven't obviously had a poo <laughs> 20 times a day to now never again, oh my goodness, no nappies, I'm not going to lie, I had to wear nappies because I became incontinent, so yeah. Um, I went to my mum and dad's. I stayed at my mum and dad's because we've got children and dogs and obviously they do like, don't let anything jump on you. You've just got to rest. So I've been at mum's for nearly two weeks and here I am home. This is my home. Um, so my journey has kind of ended and only just begun. But wow, it's <laughs> it's been crazy. I've cried a lot in hospital. I've been comforted a lot in hospital, but I'm not someone for sympathy. I am a warrior we are the ulcerative colitis warriors and it's so true you know it's a hidden illness but it is the most awful illness and I do feel for everyone that suffers and one in 500 of us has a bag I've now called my stoma Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> I'm even contemplating a tattoo of Sonic the Hedgehog as well but that's probably another story um I've got yeah Sonic Sonic cover for it and a doggy cover for it I'm doggy mad so uh, so yes yeah, so this is where I bid you farewell um, I hope it's helped it's been very frank but that's what you need um, and if any friends and family watch it as well sorry thank you for the support you've all been awesome the people that have visited all the flowers the cards it's so lovely to be loved so thank you I love you all and uh, who knows there may be an update soon take care bye bye